Now we know how to manipulate the various parameters of the router, and we know how to have our way with this router. But the next problem is writing firewall rules that are effective. In order to write an effective rule, you have to understand how the system works. And I've searched high and low well, and find no high level description of this router. So I went ahead and created my own. Here's a functional block diagram of the Mikrotik router. And we'll spend a lot of time on this particular diagram. What it does, it correlates what interfaces means, what wireless means, what bridge means, what switch means, what various IP parameters mean. These are all sorted out in this one functional block diagram. I spent hours and hours on this functional block diagram. And hopefully it'll prove valuable for your use. When I first began trying to write my own firewall rules, I had a lot of issues because I couldn't make sense out of these terms, interface, wireless, bridge, switch. I couldn't understand how they all interacted. And I find nothing in the Microtech manuals that discuss how these interact. I had to dig into each one and figure out how they related to each other in order to make this drawing. And the big culprit is this guy right here in the middle, this uh, alias switch chip. This alias switch chip right here in the middle. It's what does lots of things that aren't discussed over here in any way, shape, or form. So you have to understand this happens in the background and it helps tie everything together. Without this, you can't tie any of these other subjects together. It just doesn't work. So we're going to go ahead and wade through all this information and sort it all out. Let's assume for the moment that this host up here, which is my personal computer, it has a MAC address and also has an IP address. The uh, DHCP server gave it the IP address. So it comes in here and it says, I want to send a packet. It's been properly formatted. So it comes in on this router MAC address into this bridge, because this is where we have it configured right now. So the bridge has three virtual names, bridge, Ethernet, Ether2, and LAN. So he says, OK, I got this thing. It came from uh, Ether2, or it came from LAN. I don't care what you call it. So he checks says, OK, I got no bridge NAT rules to deal with. I got no bridge filters to deal with. I have no use for this thing. I'm going to just pass it off and get rid of it. So he hands it down here to the operating, to the router operating system. And the level three says, well, wait a minute. He says, is there a firewall active? So the operating system goes out and looks and says, oh, yeah, there is a firewall active. Well, in that case, I'll just give it to the firewall, and then I don't have to deal with it. So the firewall takes this packet, looks at the IP address, runs it through pre-routing, input chain, forward chain, output chain, post-routing, and says, OK, that packet can continue on. So he gives this IP address back to firewall routed packet back to the bridge. And the bridge says, OK, where do I send it? So the bridge pulls a level two switch and says, where does this thing go with this IP address somebody else gave it? Because I know nothing about IP address. I know nothing about MAC addresses. So help me out here. So the switch chip says, OK, that's supposed to go to the WAN. So that means we're going to add a level 2 header to this packet and ship it out to the, the WAN port, which is this MAC address up here. And that's where it goes. It goes out to the internet. So that's my first impression of how a packet sorts through this system. So the system's been running along just fine. Everybody's doing their job here in all these block diagrams. And uh, the router system says, wait a minute, why are you giving me this IP address to translate to an OS2 level? I've got this hardware three, this layer three, hardware offloading feature activated on that particular interface. So don't you go give me that crap. Just hand it to the 
hardware offloader. So instead of having to be ARP, it just goes to the hardware offloader and can, continues on its way to find the actual MAC address it's going to. So this is how the hardware offloading takes place. Now I want you to know I've had no enterprise Cisco router training. I've had no experience at all in networking until two years ago. So creating this functional block diagram was a major task. I think it's pretty much correct. There might be some details wrong with it, but I think it's pretty good. And if, if you do have more knowledge than I on enterprise concepts, please leave me a comment and I will adapt the facts that you may provide that needs incorporation into this block diagram.